Hi, everyone. This is me again, your favorite uh, widow. <laughs> uh, I hope all is well with everyone. I have been ex busy, but busy in a really, really good way. Um, just real quick, of course, I shared with you all, um, I completed my I, my book series um, collection, if you want to call it, um, As Told by Widow. And it's a collection of four books um, that during my grief journey of, of 11 years, I was unaware that I was putting together. Uh, I denied, you know, uh, therapy in the beginning because I felt like I could do it myself, you know, and that then, you know, it, it lasted too long because I did, um, finally get the help that I so needed and a collection. I, one day I was just looking back, going through some old material over the years and going to and actually participating in grief support groups, a lot of times people would tap me on the shoulder. Those that are, you know, are recent or uh, in their grief journey, and they would approach me and say, "Oh my God, what, what are you? Why are you still here?" Or I used to get that a lot. I still get it now. It's been eleven years, right? I think I don't know. Sometimes I feel like they're trying to give me the boots, <laughs> but um. As I said, I'm watching myself smile. You guys, I am in a beautiful and lovely place now. And you all can see that too. Look at some of my older videos. I'm stern, firm, and, and, and uh, sticking to, you know, a script that I put together. <laughs> and on some videos, I look stern and firm, but there's no script. I'm just acting out of emotions. So... I bring that up because you get through it. And one of my major goals with creating this channel, and that is to encourage you for one, that where you are in your grief journey, just know that you're gonna get through it. Because I know all too well, when you're in it, you can't see beyond that moment a lot of times, you know. And uh, and that can be disappointing, you know. There are moments where some people feel like after a certain amount of time, I should be over grieving. That's not necessarily true, okay. It's a process. You know, and a lot of times society will tell you, or maybe I should say social norms will try to dictate to you when you're supposed to be over your grief journey, okay? Or certain events equates to healing, all right? And that's why I'm here today. Because recently, my children and I experienced the transitioning of um, my husband's grandfather, which is my children's, <clears throat> excuse me, great-grandfather. 98 years old. Oh, you talk about a full life. You know who, he, he lived it up on his own terms, you know. I mean, all the way down, my um, sister-in-law said that when he was in um, hospice, for whatever reason, he comes back and say, oh, it, I'm in heaven yet? And that is, I was like, that sounds like him. So he was in a space where he was still aware of his situation, but he wasn't afraid of what was to come. You follow me? So that's why I'm here. Because in comparison 
social norm would tell you that a mother and a father should not bury a child. Social norms would say that a wife, a young wife, should not have to bury her husband while she's pregnant with their son. And vice versa. Social norms says that a, a, a man, a widower, should not have to bury his wife six months or a day after childbirth. All right? These are social norms that put death in this box. And it's like, I, 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 over the past few weeks, um, for the past few days anyhow, it had just been kind of, I don't know, uh, tickling my feather, that's old saying. And I, I just finally stopped and I had to think about it. Death is kind of saying, look, you don't define me. You don't, you didn't create me. And I do what I want to do. Period. Either you accept me or you don't. I am here to stay. Period. And I was like, hmm, yeah, you are. And that's not a bad thing, you know. And so as I sat there and I... I, I I'm a thinker. I, I tell you guys all the time. I'm so left brain. It's, it's just who I am. And I was like, am I spiritual? So, because I'm very spiritual. And I meditated over. I was praying. And something that I've always said on this channel. And I will continue to say. And that is, I can't take death away from your experience. One, because I did create the process, okay? I didn't create it. So I don't have any control over it. But if I can do anything, I want to take the sting of death away from you, you know? Or help you, I guess, soothe that sting, that hurt. And the reason I say sting, because when those first few years, and I mean like few, like, Day one, from the time I had to leave the hospital, uh, after, you know, been told my husband had transitioned till about, I don't know, five, six years later, that I finally said, okay, this hurt. And I still couldn't describe the pain. Everybody was like, oh, it's called heartache, it's called grieving, it's called uh, anger, it's called sadness, it's it's called confusion. You know, there were all these terms to them, and they are true. But there was just this certain um, sting about death that just, mm, that made me cringe about it, you know? I couldn't quite put my finger on the feeling. I couldn't identify it yet. And it wasn't until I started counseling and uh, my oldest daughter, the one who encouraged me to start this YouTube channel, that it came across me. I said, sting. That's the only thing I could come up with. And that's what I'm sticking to, is that I want to help remove that sting of death from you. And for me to do that, I have to be vulnerable and honest with you about my journey and to share with you the resources from my own perspective. I'm not a, you know, a professional, but I know this journey because I walked it and I continue to walk it now. Okay. So this will be in parts, uh, mainly because people's attention spans aren't that long anymore. I don't know. So, 
um, this will be in parts and things like that. So I'll try to keep each video under 15 to 20 minutes, 25 max. Okay. And it's the goal of this series, which I have not named as of yet, is to introduce you to something I, I touched on, and that's a death doula. And that is defined as um, a death midwife assisting the death process to help families cope with death as a natural order of life, according to Google, okay? I was introduced to the uh, concept of a death doula through, um, I call her my tarot card reader, but she's everybody's tarot card reader. So shout out to Timaj Tarot. So check her out on YouTube. She's amazing. And um, if you need a personal, if you're, you know, uh, inclined to that, uh, reach out to her. Um, she's on YouTube and I think it's spelled T M. AJ um, Tarot. And I was like, wow, never heard of. Now I've heard of midwives, of course, that help with, that assist women and men through the birthing of their children. But not a death doula. That was new to me, you know. And the other um, uh, part of this series is to help people understand that death is is a natural order of life. It should be celebrated. Now, hold tight to what I'm what I'm saying. Follow me now, okay? Death should be celebrated the way we celebrate the incoming of a child, you know? Because both of these are two natural uh, expressions of our of God the universe source whoever it is that you are inspired by and fed by and encouraged by spiritually and through religion however you see it our creator created this process and I am one of those individuals that believe that our creator creates all things that is good for us. Although the blessing is some a lot of times is that we have choices. And with choices come consequences. So that's where the discomfort comes from. Okay? On both ends and in the middle. So that's what I wanted to do. I want to take this time to introduce to you um, a series um, that I am putting together uh, to discuss so death and the box that we try to put death in called social norms. And to also uh, introduce to you all um, the availability of a death doula <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> of a death doula and all of this is to one calm everybody down when it comes to death i know it's one of those taboo things that people just don't want to talk about don't want to touch however it's a reality it's a done deal the only way out of this experience is through death. I'm not asking you to conform to anything or any of the concepts in this video or in this series. But what I would ask is that you open your mind and your heart up to just not so much open. Free your heart and free your mind of in a discomfort, unnecessary discomfort, that the idea of death causes you. I mean, the fear, the the 
you know, some people even think if they talk about it, they cause it to happen, you know, or just the, the dread that comes with it. All right. So I'm at over a little over 15 minutes. So I just wanted to do that. And like I said, this will be a series, a series. And I am wishing all of you the best and know that where you are in your grief journey, widow, widower, or anyone that's that's curious and want to know, you know, where death fits in their life. I know that, you know, it's always not knowing that causes many of us so much anguish. But I will tell you to release it. That doesn't belong to you. That anguish, guess what? It doesn't exist. All right? I love you all, and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, and also, it's very important. Um, hit the thumbs up. You know, leave a comment. And enjoy being in the present. And know that, you know, hey, love right now. Love on yourself. Love on those right there with you. Okay? And if there's no love there, if you can't spread love, politely dismiss yourself from this space. Okay? And find you what where you can. All right. Peace. Bye.